Sends it back to his keeper. Memphis dominating possession, 62% to 38%. Now here's a long ball. Charlie Dennis chasing, crossing over, trying to get to that left foot shot, and it is in. And the opening goal belongs to Tampa Bay. And Charlie Dennis, he becomes the third Tampa Bay Rowdy to have double-digit goals this season. 1-0 to the Rowdies in the 20th minute. From Connor Sparrow and Charlie Dennis just outruns and outmuscles Lucas Turgey. What a cutback that was here, but what I like is the finish. Just beats Drew Roman, got his near post. And he went for goal, just chipping it over the wall. Sent back, and now Malloy. Deals it left for Jeremy Kelly. Kelly slips it through to Fernando on the left. Fernando crossing, and there's a goal! Rodrigo da Costa levels the matter at one with his 10th goal of the season. We saw the great first touch and the great ball there from Jeremy Kelly. And what a ball this is from Fernando. Slips it into da Costa. Excellent finish as well. Side netting, I believe it went through one of those Tampa Bay Rowdies players' legs as well. You can see here in the replay. Maybe just went right to the, the side, Aaron Guillen there. But what a finish that was for Rodrigo da Costa. So da Costa's 10th goal of the season, his sixth with 9-0-1 FC. Guillen. Here's Cal Jennings getting it out in front of him and crosses it into the goal. A second goal for Tampa Bay and Cal Jennings, a personal best, 12 goals in a season. Again, you saw the muted celebration there. What a finish that was. The muted celebration against his former club. A lot of respect for his former club, but. Drew ball to Pickering, chips it forward. Dolly cutting back. Dolly right-footed shot, back post. It's hit it in for an equalizer. Holy cow, what a goal by 901 FC. From Rashawn Dolly, chipped it to the back post. What a pass. Loy in stoppage time to give Memphis the lead. It's saved. Malloy bounces it. Standing his ground. Aaron Malloy with the second chance at it off the post. And yeah, it either could have looked like it, it could have been Forrest Lasso there. Very impressive. And that's why there's something special about this team. I think Bob Lilly believes it as well, that they can go all the way this year. Nice layoff now as Forbes takes over, finding Dequa. Albert Dequa! There is the opener! 21st minutes! Who else but number nine? Albert Dequa's 15th of the season! Time again, he doesn't need much to work with. And they're able to play him in here. King Kenny on the ball, head up. Just slides it in, first touch, just takes it away from the defender. It was Bryce Washington. And that first touch just gives him a little half a moment. And there's, a, there's actually a tackle. It might be a slight deflection, but he gets it on target. And that's what you need to do. And there's nothing Dane Jackerman can do. He can't read the shot. Five or six minutes before the goal, there's been a couple of other half chances. A lot of it, as you said, coming from Danny Rivera down the right-hand side. And, you know, ultimately, players of this quality will score. Here is Forbes now, turning creator once again. Kiza got a second bite at the apple and finishes. Edward Kiza makes it 2-0 Pittsburgh. Goals two minutes apart for the Hounds, and they are running rampant here at Highmark. It's too easy. Look at the space. Ronaldo Forbes has got, he's got his time to get his head up, puts that ball in, now you've got space, shot comes, goalkeeper just loses the ball, he gets his hands to it, can't hold on to it for some reason, tries to kick it away, doesn't, and Edward Kieser punishes him, goalkeeper error, but now Loudon really are in trouble. Nice Washington, Jacob Green, the left back, El Medkar, from distance, Khalil El Medkar! A lifeline for Loudoun United on the hour mark. Beautiful skill from distance. Corner. That is a fantastic strike, and there's nothing Christian Garner can do. And he's done this before, El Medcar. All of his goals have turned. Biasi was there. Only as far as Green. His pass not on the mark. And the Riverhounds can counter. Dequa all alone with the field in front. Albert Dequa, second of the night. And that should do it for the Riverhounds. 16 on the season, three on the evening for the home team. And three points surely in the bag now.
They did so well here. The ball won there. Look at that outside of the foot pass, way inside his own half. Can't be offside. He knows he's got lots of time. He glances over his shoulder, just waits, looks at Dane Jackman and puts it past him. And that's the danger. You cannot leave a player like him who's already scored one and had a few more chances. You can't leave him on his own inside his own half. And maybe that's an error that Lyle United shouldn't have made. And they've been punished for it. And that's his second of the night. We've seen Charleston really be patient, but finding that urgency in the final third, as you see right here, building through phase one and phase two. It falls perfectly to Tristan Treger. He ripples the rope, and it's a first half stoppage time. Go ahead goal by Tristan Treger. Charleston on top, 1-0. Third, we talked about that balance between being patient and urgent. They have been patient in the buildup in phase one and phase two. San Diego. Treger running into space. Tristan Treger having himself a career night. Early in the second half after a late first half strike. The to swing the ball from side to side and this one up towards the middle and headed out by Miami. A second ball in. Chance towards the back post, headed home. Beautiful. Michael Bryant puts Detroit City on the board. Such a great start. Exactly what Detroit's looking for. That is a stunning goal. Amazing. Such a great whipped in ball towards that back post. I think the defense is asleep in there. His first minutes of the game, sometimes. To Morris. In the 18, back to Levi's. Yep. Header in! Beautiful! <laughs> Amu Mensa, gorgeous! Another second ball goal. With a goal, and what a perfectly executed set piece. Really well done there. Second ball goes in, flips it towards the back post. Nowhere near the keeper. Off the post and in. Amazing. It's such a good finish. Well, Amu Mensa tucks that in the corner. With still plenty of time to get the equalizer. From Repetto, and it's in. Miami FC's on the board. We have a ball game. It's going to be a long 15 minutes now. Good run up, takes it confidently, slots it right down the middle. 2 1. Test your, 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 your mantle, if you understand. Okay. Say the same thing for. The Miami FC oh. as well. How about that ball? Into the open net. Five straight games with a goal for one Cal Jennings. And the Rowdies in front, 1-0. Like drinking a cup of tea. Over the top this time, Aaron Guillen beautifully beats the press. One touch, keeper in no man's land. And Cal Jennings, the most informed forward in the league. One touch. And the next touch, good night. The idea is to come out with three, no matter how you get there. On the move now, Wilson Harris. Trying to beat Guillentes inside, who slipped on the turf monster. That one oh. finds the net, and we are level at one. What a goal. Again, he cut in. Guillen fell down, and then he just picked his spot. Perez running at defenders, now lays it to the left. Put in front! Tampa Bay Rowdy's goal! It is a brace for Cal Jennings! What a buildup! And the green and gold have taken the lead. Actually, yep, Josh Perez drew the defenders in and the one-time pass. And look at the flick to the last post by Jennings. Opening his shoulders up, Jeff. Look at the technique. 
No chance for Summer, and it is 2-1. Alex Dixon here in the 31st minute to try the penalty. The run-up and tucks it away for a Monterey Bay goal in the 31st minute. His 11th goal of the season. He picks his corner and calmly strokes it into the back of the net for the visiting Monterey Bay. Jerome Ingress guesses the right side, but just could not get his hand down low enough in time. In fact, watch, it goes under his arm. Yeah. I think if he goes low and shoots his hand straight yeah. out, he gets a paw to it, but it slips underneath his arm. He got there in time. Bid, it yeah. just got under him. Smart not to put a ball in there. Four defenders with yours, as I say that. Whipped in. Nathan was on hand, but it's cleared away. A bit of a slip. Hernandez stays with it, clips it into the box. Laser towards goal. What a goal. Santiago Patino, a special effort. What a way to open the scoring. Try and move themselves back to the top of the West. And what did we say in the beginning of the game? What is Hernandez going to do? Not being able to strike it well. But look at this. Draws in one, two, three, four. Little chip and technique right there. Oh, what a goal. And this will be the view right here. We'll let it go. Just enjoy it. You can't, what a view. You can't hit a what ball a view again. than that. Test this one, let it bounce. To the right-hand side. Numbers into the area. Low. Rios. It is. It is. Marco Rios, 16 years of age. The equalizer, goal number two on the season. Franker be in a dangerous spot. Well done here to get the shot off. When he shot it, I was like, oh no. But he's got the rebound. Great composure from the 16-year-old late in the game. Tie it up. Now go get another one and win the game for your team. Does just enough there. He was wondering if it was across the line on the first attempt. There's the whistle. Johnny Rodriguez steps up, shoots, and a goal! And just like that, the Roots early on open up a 1-0 lead. Yeah, it was a comfortable penalty, wasn't it? You felt quite confident. It's a very... And he just laid up and just low and hard into the right, the left-hand side of the net. Nothing Diaz could do, and a good overall penalty for the Oakland Roots. And they started the game well. They've kept possession well. They've not created any chances. A penalty. To me, marking is being close, breathing down the neck of an opponent, not five yards away. And, and, and you want that from your players. First of all, this lights, best opportunity of the night, shot, and a goal! Just like that, finding a moment to shine, and the lights, Jimenez says, present, tying up the match here in the 56th minute. Yeah, it's really good play from, from the lights. It's Danny Rios with the assist into Gonzalez's feet, inside, on his right foot this time, and he's, he's smashed that from the edge of the box, hasn't he? And nothing Blanchett could do, in off the post, and what a strike. Amazing, amazing strike. That's exactly what this game needed, wanted, and now here's another opportunity for the lights. Same side, on the right side, plenty of time, plenty of space. Can he find a service? Yes. Can he connect? The header and goal! The second one in consecutive minutes for the lights. The lights are on and they're on top of the scoreboard. Oh. Gonzalez, he's lifted his head. He's seen it. He's played it to the back post. Brilliant dink ball. Rios coming at the back post, played it in. And Tyler Bagby has used his chest. Here's an opportunity. 3v3. Shot from distance. Goal! What a golazo in the 89th minute. And the lights are bright in Vegas. Wow! <laughs> That's a bag. We saw him do this a minute ago on his right foot, his stronger foot, and he didn't hit it well. He's put it on his left foot. <laughs> Blanchett, the goalkeeper for the Roots, says it all. He didn't even move. On his left foot, what a strike from Tyler Bagley. And do you know what? He's already scored tonight. <laughs> this composed celebration. Enzo Martinez moved to the center forward spot. And I would bet it's Nico Brett coming off. Nico Brett scores! The setup from Preston Itaka, Nico Brett on the doorstep in Birmingham have breakthrough. Nico 
Michael Brett choosing not to celebrate against his old team. Moves down that wing, making a difference. Nico Brett, just a simple tap in at the back post. Hard to miss that opportunity. And fitting for Birmingham Legion, it's the two former men who played for New Mexico United. 